class, this is going to be my discussion of the Calvin cycle, which would be the quote-unquote dark reactions of photosynthesis. So the Calvin cycle, um, up to this point, we've talked about how um, water gets converted to O2 through oxidation uh, within the electron transport chain, which would be your Z scheme of your light reaction. Now we're going to talk about how CO2 can become your sugar molecule through anabolism. Um, so the Kelvin cycle is the process that actually does the synthesis of your hexose sugars from CO2 and water. Uh, and the rainforest is actually the primary spot where all of this we refer to as carbon fixation. So you might have heard that in the news. Um, but carbon fixation just means that we're taking CO2 and we are making sugars out of it. So as the plants fix carbon, they're going to pull CO2 out of the air, which is a common greenhouse gas and it's going to help purify our air. And it's going to release as a process O2. Note that it does not release O2 as part of this Kelvin cycle. The O2 release comes from the light reactions. All right, so this is a basic diagram to show the Kelvin cycle. And as you can see, what does it look a whole lot like? Well, it looks a whole lot like um, the Krebs cycle or our citric acid cycle. So the Kelvin cycle actually occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast and has three stages. So the first stage is we are going to fixate, our, we're going to fix our CO2 onto our ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. And in that process, we're going to form a super unstable intermediate, which then causes our six carbon sugar to break into two three carbon sugars. This should sound familiar. Um, and so through that process, we're going to take those two three carbon sugars and we're going to do a whole bunch of reduction till we form our hexose. Then the third step is that we have to regenerate our ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate so that we can fix more CO2. This is the overall net reaction for the Kelvin cycle. So you can see that we have to have six CO2s to be able to get one um, hexo sugar. So we have to replicate this multiple times to be able to get this. Remember, this is because we can't forget about conservation of matter, right? Carbons just can't appear from nowhere. Note also that this is going to be using a lot of energy. So we have to use 18 ATP to be able to make one pack of sugar. And we're also going to be doing a lot of reduction. So we're going to... Um, reduce our sugars to be able, and in that process, we're going to oxidize our NADPH to create NADP. All right, so the first step is fixation of CO2, and um, we have to have ribulose 1 5 this part. We add our CO2, this creates a super unstable intermediate that is going to get the two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. So we add the CO2 actually to our enzyme to create a carbamate um, byproduct, or not byproduct, but carbamate intermediate. <clears throat> Remember that our carbamates allow, these are super energetic, and so actually provide energy for reactions to occur. Um, and this all occurs 
using the most prevalent enzyme on planet Earth. We refer to this as Rubisco. This is the abbreviation for the enzyme, which its name is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. So we're adding CO2 um, in the process of oxidizing it. Remember that we make, to be able to add CO2, we have to add, make this carbamate ion, which um, helps to activate our um, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate um, to react with CO2. All right, the second stage is the reduction to make our hexosic phosphates. So we start with two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate, and as we move up, note, follow the arrows that we're going up here, but this should look familiar to you. This is very similar to our gluconeogenic pathway, except that we are using NADPH as opposed to NADH. Remember, NADPH is what we use for our plants. Um, okay, so um, here in italics are going to be our enzyme names. Kinase, remember, is going to be our transferase. We're going to be transferring a phosphate. Our dehydrogenase, we're going to do some oxidation. This is We know this because we have an NADPH associated. So this is similar to our NADH. Triose phosphate isomerase, we've seen this enzyme before. Um, and then fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase. Then gets us up here into our hexose monophosphate pool, which allows us to make our hexose sugars. All right, so that concludes the amount of information you are responsible for for chapters 22 and 23. This slide, I expect for you to come to class on Tuesday having completed and be ready to discuss the answers to these questions. So you will turn them in as soon as you walk in the room on Tuesday. Um, I And we will go over them in class. Have a good weekend and we'll talk. If you have questions, please let me know. And this is the only place where I will post these. So take a photo, write them down, pause the video.